André Eugenie Adrien de Jong was born in Scarbeck, Belgium, on the 30th of November 1916. Her father, Frédéric de Jong, was a headmaster at the school, and her mother was called Alice de Carpentrier. At the time of her birth, her country's capital city, Brussels, was under German occupation. As she grew up, de Jong learned the story of Edith Cavill, an English nurse who saved the lives of around 200 soldiers by facilitating their escape of German-occupied Belgium during the First World War. Cavill managed this by transporting the soldiers to the Netherlands, which was neutral. Due to her actions, she was sentenced to death and killed by a German firing squad. De Jong became inspired by her story and looked up to Cavill as an example to follow. There are few details on her early life, but her upbringing was probably quite normal. After completing her education, she worked as a commercial artist in Malmondi. At this point, her life was steady and quite ordinary. This was all about to change with the outbreak of the Second World War in 1939. After weeks of fighting, on the 28th of May 1940, Belgium finally surrendered to the German forces. De Jong was 23 years old at the time and felt the need to help those who had been negatively affected. She promptly quit her job and moved to Brussels where she became a nurse. Despite the long hours and stressful work that nurses faced during World War II, De Jong coped quite well, probably in part thanks to her intellect and the first aid training that she received while she was still in education. Among her patients were British servicemen. De Jong aided them to the best of her abilities and even went the extra mile by getting their letters back home to loved ones via the Red Cross. In the occupied countries, the Nazis had control of a movement and had imposed strict rules and measures in order to avoid people escaping. Yet, De Jong took no notice she soon started to devise strategies to get soldiers and airmen back to Britain. She took her ideas a step further and began to confer with confidants who could help her with this task. Before long, she was following in the footsteps of her heroine. However, escaping Belgium was now a much more complicated task than in the First World War. The previously neutral Netherlands had been overrun and all of Belgium's bordering countries were German-occupied. Despite these setbacks, de Jong created a long route to the supposedly neutral Spain to facilitate the escape of soldiers and fallen airmen. The route was called the Comet Escape Line because of the speed with which soldiers were hustled along it. On one occasion, a seven-man RAF bomber crew made it to Gibraltar in a week. The whole operation was very complex and required a lot of attention to detail. First, fallen airmen had to be recovered before the Nazis got to them. Then, they were given civilian clothing and fake documents had to be made. In many cases, medical assistance had to be provided. These men had to fully recover while in hiding before they could do anything. Finally, food and shelter had to be provided for the men along the way. De Jong started the plan of escape by arranging designated safe houses in and around Brussels. She then needed to enlist help without being caught. Fortunately, many people were willing to do their part to help with the success of the Comet escape line, even though these activities were a form of treason and anyone caught would probably be sentenced to death. Once all the bases were in place, the first group set off in hopes of making it to Britain. The 11-man group was sent via Paris and then to the Pyrenees. These zones were heavily guarded by Nazi troops, so speed and stealthiness were essential. Finally, the 11 men crossed into Spain on foot. The 1,000-mile path was treacherous, but it was the only way to get these men to safety. However, the first attempt ended badly. All members of the party were arrested by Spanish authorities. Although Spain was neutral, they had a pro-Nazi foreign policy and attained 
any Allied escapees. Ultimately, only two of the 11 men managed to reach England. Because of this initial failure, the young decided that she would personally lead the way for the next group, which was comprised of three soldiers and herself. They followed the same route as the 11 men that were caught by the Spanish authorities. However, this time, they were much more cautious when they crossed the border. Eventually, they reached safety, which came in the form of the British consulate in Bilbao. The success of the Comet escape line was huge. Fallen airmen and other soldiers now had a possibility to get back home instead of being killed or taken in as a prisoner of war. Furthermore, it had a wider importance as the route was coupled with espionage and it allowed the Allied forces to receive key information. Following de Jong's breakthrough, she wanted to help as many people as possible. To do this, she asked British officials to support future missions. Initially, they were skeptical that she may be working undercover, but eventually, de Jong won British intelligence over. Not only did they provide financial and logistical backing, but they also set up a branch to bring home stranded servicemen from occupied territory. One airman described his encounter with de Jong. In 1941, he and his two crewmen had no other option than to land their bomber in Belgian territory. The three stayed out of sight and managed to find their way to the underground. Eventually, they made it to a safe house and while there, a young woman appeared. De Jong said to the men, My name is André, but I would like you to call me by my code name, which is Dede, which means little mother. From here on, I will be your little mother, and you will be my little children. It will be my job to get my children to Spain and freedom. The three men were stunned and left speechless. Eventually, one of them spoke and said, Our lives are going to depend on a schoolgirl. Two of the three survived the trek, but the third crew member unfortunately did not. One rescued bomber member said this about the young. It was her eyes that were absolutely burning and there was an air of supreme confidence about her. It was this that kept many of the exhausted men going during the 1000 mile trek. De Jong warned anyone willing to take the journey that there was a chance that they could be captured and later killed. In June 1943, de Jong's father, who had helped her with the comet route, was arrested by the Gestapo and later executed. For about two years, the comet escape route flourished alongside Pat. This escape route was established by a soldier in the British Army called Ian Garrow, who had missed the Dunkirk evacuation. Yet, in 1942, it wound up after a betrayal. In January 1943, the Germans started to grow suspicious of what was going on. A number of arrests ensued and the betrayals began. Because of this, de Jong moved her headquarters to Paris, hoping it would keep the Nazis off her tail. However, eventually de Jong was captured. On her 33rd run to Spain, while escorting three RAF men, the group was unable to cross a flooded river so they were forced to stay in the safe house of a Basque woman. Yet, the next morning, the house was surrounded by around 10 German soldiers. De Jong was certain that the man who had betrayed them was a farm worker called Donato. She was interrogated by the Gestapo 20 times. She confessed to being the mastermind behind the escape route, but they refused to believe her. The Gestapo thought it impossible that a young woman was capable of creating such a network. They believed she must only have had a minor role. Maybe because of this, they spared her life. In any case, they sent her to the Ravensbrück concentration camp. Despite her absence, the comet line continued to function. De Jong survived the concentration camp, but she was very ill and malnourished by the time she was released in April 1945. In total, De Jong led 33 expeditions across Western Europe and personally escorted 
118 servicemen to safety. Altogether, the organisation was responsible for the safe return of around 800 men. After the war, de Jong went to the Belgian Congo to work as a nurse in a leper colony. After this, she undertook similar work in Ethiopia. For her wartime heroism, she was awarded the George Medal by the British and the Medal of Freedom by the United States. Furthermore, she was given many honorary positions and medals for her efforts during the war by the French and the Belgians. Finally, in 1985, she was made a Countess by the King of Belgium. The Countess de Jong died in Brussels on the 13th of October 2007 at the age of 90. Thank you everyone for watching this video on Andre de Jong. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave me a like and a comment down below if you're new to the channel and you enjoyed. Why not subscribe? If you have any suggestions, be free to send, be free to send me an email which is in my descriptions. That's all from me. So I will see all of you in the next Forgotten Life. Thanks.